Grass types are some of my personal favorite Pokemon, and I feel like they're massively underappreciated in the community. I mean, sure, the other choices used to be a crazy fire-breathing dragon and a tortoise with massive cannons on its shoulders, and then there's grass. <laughs> However, since then, we've got tons of new grass types, my favorite being Shaman, because it's a hedgehog. You know, hedgehog. Let me know your favorite grass type down in the comments below, because today I might be using it as I attempt to beat a Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Hardcore Nuzlocke using only grass types. Pause to read the rules for a Hardcore Nuzlocke on screen right now, and without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting us off in true Hoenn fashion, our mom has shoved us in the back of a moving truck. But that's not enough to keep us from being introduced to the wondrous world of Pokemon. <coughs> After that, we're introduced to Professor Birch, who he himself probably needs to be introduced to self-defense. Hot tip, don't make the family jewels this biteable if you're being attacked by a dog. Either way, after seeing Professor Birch get assaulted, let's just say he's lucky he already has kids. We get to pick our starter Pokemon, and of course we pick the Grass-type Trico. I name it Oak, and Lax Nature at least isn't bad. It's a PC used for research. On the monitors, an image of a never-before-seen Pokemon. Yup, that is cursed. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I didn't know how to leave Old Ale Town, so I actually managed to evolve my favorite starter, Tree Mudkip, into a Marsh Stomp before ever leaving the town. Huh, I never knew May was such a huge Marvel fan. That's awesome, since this video is brought to you by Marvel Strike Force. If you're as crazy about Marvel as I am, you'll be happy to know that this squad-based RPG has over 180 heroes and villains in total for you to put together your dream team to save the Earth. I mean, just take a good look at the almighty Thor and everyone else in their multiple costumes to choose from to save the world in style. Which I'm definitely all about being Unimus top model and all. Battle your way through arena, raid, and alliance wars to earn character shards, resources, and equipment to assemble your personalized Marvel Squad. Log in and play through in-game events for new character releases, holiday events, and MCU-themed campaigns. Marvel Strike Force is available for free on iOS and Android. Download now using my link below and join the fight. Back to our adventure and we can find our second encounter on Route 102, Alotad. And this thing was my absolute favorite Pokemon as a kid. It's so cute! I name it Elm, and it has a relaxed nature, which isn't that good, but it's at least fitting. Next up, we can of course find yet another encounter in the Petalburg Woods, a shroomish, which I name Ivy. It has a brave nature, which is actually really good for Breloom, since we get Mock Punch. And so at this point, there's not much else to do but to take on the first gym battle versus Roxanne and her rock types. And I don't think anybody's gonna be surprised when I say that this gym was super easy since we've got grass types. Geodude is of course quad weak to grass, so we would have taken that thing out probably twice over, but it does live on sturdy, so it takes another hit to take it out after a potion. Nose Pass can be a bit trickier, and as you can see, Mega Drain didn't do too much damage, but neither did Rock Tomb, so a few Mega Drains later, we get a crit and take it out for the first badge. Roxanne may have been a pushover, but she's not the only person who likes rocks in this town, and I never took Mr. Stone for a religious person, but praise Lord Helix. Kind old Mr. Briny then takes us over to Duford Town, and you guys already know it, I love boats! While there, we take on this fisherman, against whom Oak levels up to level 16 and evolves into a Grovile, but not only that, Elm gets to level 14 and evolves into Lombre. This of course means that we're ready to take on the king of taking his pants off real fast, Brawly and his fighting types. And this fight honestly looks pretty worrying, since both his Pokemon have Bulk Up and his Makuhita has Sand Attack. So I go ahead and lead off with Oak and go for a Mega Drain, which does about half damage to the Machop, which decides to go for a Leer. I then take out the Machop with another Mega Drain, but since it's lowered my defense, I'm deadly scared of this Makuhita, so I decide to swap out into Ivy, who gets hit by a knockoff. It does get rid of my Orenberry, and the next turn I set up a Leech Seed, and it starts doing what I'm afraid of and sets up a Bulk Up. I then decide to gauge damage with Mega Drain, and it does about 20% as it goes for another bulk up to double its attack. Leech Seed and Mega Drain damage takes it down low as it goes for an Arm Thrust, and on the third hit, it actually gets poisoned by Effect Spore, and then hits me with five hits down to three HP. But funny enough, since we got that poison, it's actually enough to take it out together with the Leech Seed. So that fight ended up being a lot less scary than I expected it to be. Are potion festivals even trendier overseas? Excuse me, what? I wonder if there's anything on TV about potion festivals. Again, what? Of course the trend right now is potion festivals. Okay, what is a potion festival and why does it sound like a weird drug thing? Okay, I'll be the one to say it. Steven is one fine man. Off to Slateport we sail. Whenever I visit here, I get carried away and buy too much. 
For heaven's sake, restrain yourself, woman. And this is the point in the game where we meet Archie, former comedian turned environmental terrorist. So tell me, boyo, you, you got any jokes? Yeah, this guy's a real grass hole. As we get our next encounter here, an oddish, I just want to point out how weird it is that it's called the grass type. Shouldn't it be the plant type? I mean, the only actual grass-based Pokemon I can think of is oddish. And oddish looks like it either belongs at a potion festival or that its name should be Grass Hat. I name mine Juniper. And this means that we've arrived at probably the most infamous rival battle in all of Pokemon. May is no pushover, and the fact that she has a level 20 Combuscan is a terrifying prospect for the team. Whalmer's first, and we just take it out with two Mega Drains. Next is Combuscan, so I decide to gauge damage with Rock Tomb, but it does nothing at all, and a Flame Charge almost takes me out. Terrified for my life, I swap out into Ivy, who eats a Flame Charge not well, but I do get the Effect Spore and actually put it to sleep. That's the second time Effect Spores come in clutch, and I go ahead and swap out into Elm as Combuscan wakes up and goes for Double Kick for some reason, so I go for a bubble, which does about half of its remaining health. It then hits me with a neutral flame charge, which takes me down to 11 HP as another bubble does the job, and that's pretty much it for May, and that battle should not have gone as smoothly as it did. However, this means that we can go west of Mauville City and catch ourselves a Roselia. Jolly nature, what did I do to deserve this? And after Grass Hat, or rather Juniper, gets to level 21 and evolves into Gloom, it's time to take on the third gym leader, Watson, and his electric types. And since since Watson has a couple of steel types, you might think this gym would be super difficult, but in Mauville City, we can actually purchase Power Up Punch, which is going to make this fight a lot easier than it otherwise would be. We do get paralyzed by a Thunder Wave, but we heal it off with a Cherry Berry and take out the Magnemite with another Power Up Punch, getting us to plus two attack. We then hit the Magneton with a third Power Up Punch, and it misses a Supersonic, which is so clutch since we can take it out and get to plus four, which means that Voltorb is the final Pokemon. A fifth Power Up Punch isn't quite enough to take it out as it goes for a charge, but the next turn we can seal the deal with a Quick Attack. As difficult as Watson can be, I'm pretty happy that one was easy. Then as we continue to progress through the story, Shroomish evolving into Breloom is a massive upgrade to the team. Mmm, I can smell it. I can smell it right here. Yo, my young Pokemon trainer, what can I do for you, huh? What can you do for me? How about you stay at least 200 feet away from me and any nearby school? We then make our way to Fall Arbor Town to help out an astrophysicist. No, wait, that would be ridiculous for a 10-year-old to do. We're helping rescue an astrophysicist that's been kidnapped by environmental terrorists. Give it up, you bozos. I just thought that was the perfect thing to call these guys. I mean, just, just look at this guy's posture. What are we doing? And this is where we meet Maxi, a man sworn to eradicate all comedy from the world. He's a man of few words. We do, however, manage to rescue the professor, which Archie doesn't seem to find very funny, so he challenges us to a pretty scary battle. The only thing that really scares us about this fight is that he has a goal bat with both air cutter and wing attack. Fortunately, his mighty Anna doesn't have intimidate, so we can use power up punch to raise our attack, and it then uses swagger, which raises our attack by another two stages, and a Personberry cures the confusion. Now that we're at plus three, we can decimate the Mighty Anna with a Leaf Blade, which is exactly what happens to his Sharpedo, which means we have to take some rough skin. This means that we're gonna outspeed Golbat and be able to take it out with a plus three Rock Tomb, but without this strategy, we would have definitely lost some Pokemon to this guy. But now that we've defeated Archie, this means that we have to face Flannery and her fire types. And I hear your concern. Oh no, fire types are strong against grass types. Whatever will you do? And I said it best myself. Oh, look at the bubbles. That's right, the very first turn we rip through this slugma with a bubble beam. Next up is Torkoal, and a bubble beam does about 70% to this thing as it then sets up a sunny day. This means that our next bubble beam is gonna do half damage, but it's still enough to take out the Torkoal. And even though the sun's up, Nummel's quad weak to water, so it goes down, and that was the easiest Flannery fight ever. After the gym, we can pick up the root fossil in the desert, but not only that, we can also pick up our next encounter, a Cacnea that I named Burnett. She even has an attack boosting nature, finally something good. Even Rowan the Leap has a decent nature. And so the time has come, the final test of worthiness for any man. That's right, it's time to face our father. And Norman can be a pretty scary opponent since Slaking has the stats of a legendary Pokemon. So I decide our best course of action is gonna be using our fighting type Ivy and as Retaliate hits, Effect Spore clutches out again as we put the Slaking to sleep and use Power Up Punch. The next punch puts Slaking in the red, so Norman uses a Hyper Potion, which means that we're gonna get two more Power Up Punches before this Slaking goes down, putting us at plus four attack. And I don't think you understand how helpful that effect spore was. This means that we're just gonna one-shot both the Vigoroth and the Slaking with mock punches, and that's it for badge five. Why, hello. 
Hello there. Um, Steven, I think I'm having second thoughts. Whoa there, Swellow. How you doing? That was close. Moving on, we have the option to capture Tropius, and we also run into Team Aqua in a desperate attempt to try and steal jokes from the Weather Institute. Give them back. We also have a brief run-in with May, but since we're in the rain, she really can't do any damage to us with fire moves and opts for quick attack, and Elm destroys Combuskin with a rain-boosted surf. We can also pick up a Leaf Stone, which means we can finally evolve Juniper into Vile Plume. But not only that, Burnett evolves into a cacturn. And with all that out of the way, it's time to take on what I feared would be the most difficult gym leader of the run, Winona and her flying types. So I start out with Rowan versus Swellow, which gets hit by an aerial ace, and Ancient Power does way more damage than I expected it to. The Swellow then sets up evasion with a double team, but fortunately, I hit a brine and take out the Swellow, which could be one of the most threatening things on our team. Skarmory then does massive damage with a Steel Wing, and I heal up a bit with a Citrus Berry before hitting it with a puny Ancient Power. And it's at this point I realize just what a great help Juniper was going to be to the team because Steel Wing does nothing and then I can put the Skarmory to sleep with a Sleep Powder. Since neither Grass or Poison are going to do me any good versus a Skarmory, I decide to swap out into Elm who can take out the Skarmory in a couple of Surfs. But Winona still has two very threatening Pokemon to our team left, the first being Pelipper. I decide to swap right back into Juniper to try to put this thing to sleep with a Sleep Powder, but I miss and get hit by an Aerial Ace which does way less damage than I expected it to and then we successfully put it to sleep and start Mega Draining. And a few Mega Drains later, we take out the Pelipper, which means we only have to deal with Altaria, which is pretty scary. At least that's what I thought, but here's the thing, this Altaria doesn't really have anything to hurt me with outside of Earthquake and Dragon Breath, which isn't going to do too much good against my team of Grass types. And so began a literal 15 minute long sitting of me trying to take down this Altaria, because unfortunately, right as I got it down to low enough health, it woke up and started going for Roost, and I had nothing that could take this thing down quick enough. I tried switching in Pokemon after Pokemon, but it just kept going going for Roost, and there was no good way for me to take this thing out. Eventually, though, after tens of turns, I finally had Leech Seed up and got it down to low enough health where it managed to take it out, but that was very painful to sit through. The silver lining is, of course, that we didn't lose any Pokemon to the Flying-type Gym Leader, and Grovile evolved into Sceptile. After our triumph, we make our way to Mount Pyre, where we find Archie trying to steal the orbs of humor. Sorry, Scampo. Okay, that, that is actually the funniest thing he's said so far. I guess it's working for him. Please don't ever let that man do stand up. On our way to Lily Cove City, we can pick up a shiny stone, which will let us evolve Magnolia into a Roserade. I guess we just have to keep squirting water, right? Don't make me say it. Flosh, flosh. Excuse me, what? Expanding the sea. What exactly do we have to do to achieve that? Didn't you hear the man? Flosh, flosh. My guy, I hate to break it to you because this has happened to me during editing, but that's the blue screen of death. Then as we make our way to Moss Deep City, Rowan gets to level 40 and evolves into Cradilly. Literally filled with penis. Anyway, now that we've settled in in Moss Deep City, it's time to take on the 7th Gym versus Tate and Liza. Now this fight is certainly a lot more tricky in Emerald, and the fact that we have all grass types, which are super effective against both Soul Rock and Lunatone, certainly helps us out. A Needle Arm flinches and almost takes out the Lunatone, and one more Surf takes it out once and for all, but the sun isn't doing us any favors. Soul Rock then goes for a Rock Slide, which flinches both of my Pokemon. I then decide to swap out Burnett for Magnolia, and another Rock Slide flinches Elm again. I then decide to swap out Elm for Rowan, and a few turns later, the combination of Petal Blizzard and Brine is enough to take out the Soul Rock and claim the seventh badge. This, of course, means that we can now use Dive and pick up the Blue Shard, which we can trade for a Water Stone and finally evolve Elm into a Ludicolo. Not like this, Archie. You failed. I have my own comedy show. Obviously, the show must not go on, so we take on Archie in a battle, which is actually incredibly scary going into. Archie leads off with Mightyena, which fortunately doesn't have Intimidate, and we go for Burnett. A Needle Arm leaves it at about 35% health, and we get hit by a Scary Face the next turn. It then goes for a Taunt, which is so clutch since it didn't go for Embargo, which means we're gonna be able to use our Berry now that we're facing Muck. The first turn it misses Gunk Shot, so we hit it with a Faint Attack to about 60%, and it goes for a Sludge wave which we can reduce the damage of with our berry. Since we can't take another hit, I swap out a Burnett into Magnolia, who takes a lot of damage from a Gunk Shot, but the next turn we can outspeed and take it out with a Petal Blizzard. Any move would have done the trick. Next up is the Big Bad Crobat that could tear through our team, but I swap into Rowan, who takes about 40% from an Acrobatics. The second one leaves us at low health, but a Citrus Berry keeps us healthy, and we hit back with an Ancient Power. 
Because of that health we got back from the Citrus Berry, we can actually survive another Acrobatics, which means we can take out the Crobat without any deaths. However, the same can't be said for Mega Sharpedo. We're gonna have to sack something here, and I decided that our best bet is unfortunately gonna have to be Juniper, since we already have Magnolia, who's the same typing. And so after Sharpedo Mega Evolves, it takes us out in two hits, which leads us to the next move we're gonna make, Mega Evolving Sceptile. And the way I'm using Mega Evolution in this run is I'm only gonna be allowing it in fights where we actually face Mega Pokemon. But since Mega Sharpedo has the defenses of a wet paper towel, we take it out with one single Leaf Blade. This means that we don't have to face Archie anymore, and we ruined his comedy show, which I think is the real win here. Joey, I always believed that you at least would understand my dreams. Get real, you pay me to laugh at your jokes. And that's the story of how Archie got hired by SNL. Wait, what? We then have to go on a little field trip with Kyogre, and orcas are my favorite animal, so it's too bad we don't get to use it. And so the time has come for us to take on the eighth and final gym leader, Wallace, and his water types. Now, I'm not sure if you're an educated Pokemaniac such as myself, but water types don't exactly match up well versus grass types. I actually end up dodging the Sweet Kiss, which I plan to set up a growth against and then heal off with a Person Berry, but after that, Love Disc just starts to go for Water Pulse, and funny enough, instead of confusing me with Sweet Kiss, it actually gets the confusion on the second Water Pulse, but at this point, I'm at plus three, so I just end up destroying Wallace with Giga Drain. I then go to Seamawville just to pick up Ice Beam, but... <laughs> what? How did you get in? I locked the door. You know, funny enough, the most awkward thing about this situation are my stupid antennae. It's finally time to take on Victory Road. Here I find the TM for Flamethrower. <laughs> like, that's gonna be useful. And we have to take on the Mega Evolution Enthusiast, Wally. It's time to do 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 yeah, he's really not that big an impediment to our mission. And so we've reached the final challenge of the run. It's time to take on the Elite Four Gauntlet. First of the four is Sydney, and I decided to do something a little bit daring and cap my Pokemon at level 52, which is the highest level of Sydney's Pokemon. I start by getting intimidated, and I use Power Up Punch to get my attack back and take out half the health of Mightyena as it goes for a Swagger to raise my attack another two stages and a Person Berry heals it off. Another Power Up Punch is enough to take out the Mightyena and put us at plus three attack which means that we can take out all the rest of Sydney's Pokemon with Mach Punches. Next up is Phoebe, whose Pokemon has a whole bunch of status moves that can be super annoying to deal with, so she starts out with Dusclops, and I decide to go with Burnett. The very first turn, I'm hoping it doesn't go for Confuse Ray since I don't have any more Person Berries, but I decide to go for a Growth, which means I can one-shot both the Dusclops and the incoming Dusk Noir, but I get hit by Curse. This is, of course, way preferable to the alternative where we get Confused, and we can take out both the Dusclops and the Dusk Noir, but once Sableye comes comes in, we have to switch out into Oak. I get hit by a fake out on the switch in and then go for a Leaf Blade, which does more than half, after which I take massive damage from Foul Play and take it out with another Leaf Blade. All we have left are two Bannets, so I decide to swap out into Magnolia as it goes for a Shadow Ball, which I tank very, very well, so I go for a Growth, but I forget that this thing has Psychic, which does massive damage. Since I managed to survive, though, one Growth is all it's gonna take to be able to one-hit knock out both of the Bannets with a Shadow Ball, and that's it for Phoebe. Glacia is not only next, but also a massive problem since Ice could totally tear through our team. So I'm gonna abuse the fact that she most likely is gonna set up the Hail the first turn and go for a Power Up Punch to boost my attack a bit. After it sets up the Hail, I'm expecting an Ice move, so I do have a Yacha Berry, but it actually just sets up Light Screen, which is fine since we're physical. This means that a third Power Up Punch takes out the Glalie, gets us to plus three as Frostlass comes in, which I can take out with a Rock Tomb. And I'm incredibly grateful that we didn't use up the Yacha Berry against the Glalie because I miss my Rock Tomb and a Blizzard doesn't actually take us out here and we can take out the Frostlass with the incoming Rock Tomb. Then there's the Big Bad Wall Rain, which goes down to a plus three Leaf Blade, and another Rock Tomb is enough to take out the final Glalie, which means Glacia wasn't actually that bad. Finally, we have to deal with the Dragon Master himself, Drake. And this guy is the entire reason we had to have that awkward encounter on the shipwreck, because we really need Ice Beam to be able to take out Altaria in one hit here on the first turn. It's also going to come in massively handy against this Flygon that outspeeds us and hits us with a Boom Burst as we take it out with a quad effective Ice Beam. Next up is the Big Bad Salamence, and this thing could be real scary, but it actually just misses a Dragon Rush and also goes down to a quad weak Ice Beam, so how's that for anticlimactic? I then decide to gauge some damage with Ice Beam here, and it does a bit over 25%, and a second one takes it down under half health as we fall asleep to the yawn. At this point, I decide to swap out into Oak, who has to take a Dragon Pulse to the face, which it does fairly well and can take out the Kingdra with a Leaf Blade. There's only one more Flygon remaining, and since the one with Boom Burst has Flamethrower, I'm not too afraid of this one, and I actually get Supersonic here, so I have to swap out into Rowan. 
He takes a Dragon Claw, dodges a Supersonic, and managed to take out the Flygon with an Energy Ball. And with that, we actually managed to get through the Elite Four without any casualties, but I am not confident that's going to be the case versus Champion Steven himself. Mr. McDreamy Face leads off with Skarmory as we go into Elm and hit this thing with a Surf for over half damage as it goes for Toxic. The next turn, another Surf is enough to take out the Skarmory, and Steven sends in his own Cradilly. I decide to swap out into Ivy, who's holding my very last Person Berry, which is going to heal off the confusion here. I decide to go for a Power Up Punch to boost my attack as the Cradilly goes for a Sludge Bomb, which does massive damage. With the plus one from the Power Up Punch, a Mock Punch is enough to take out the Cradilly, and next up is Claydol, which we immediately yeet out of the way with a Seed Bomb. I figure it might come in handy to preserve the Priority Mock Punch, so I decide to swap out into Burnett, who takes an Iron Tail for massive damage. I decide to go for Needle Arm, which does absolutely nothing as it misses a Stone Edge, and I get a crit Power Up Punch to boost my attack, but it's not going to go anywhere because we get absolutely destroyed by a Stone Edge. I go for Ivy to take this thing out with a Mock Punch, and we get a crit, taking it down into the red, so Steven heals up once again, and we take it down to 40% with a Mock Punch, and a third one does the job. Against Armaldo, I once again decide it might be worth keeping Mock Punch around, so I swap out into Rowan. This is pretty much just a sacrifice since I get hit by an X Scissor and another one takes me out. I decide at this point to go into Magnolia and try and hit this thing for a Giga Drain, but it doesn't really do that much damage and an X Scissor takes me down real low, so I pretty much just sacrificed Magnolia and Vayne here as well. One good thing is that Steven has used all his full restores at this point, so a Surf from Elm is going to be enough to take out the Armaldo, which means we have three Pokemon versus his one Metagross. He goes ahead and Mega Evolves it, and Mega Metagross is no joke. This thing is so bulky and very powerful. A Surf does about 30% to it, and Elm pretty much gets sent through the wall by a Giga Impact. I decide to send in my own Mega Evolution Sceptile, and since the Metagross is gonna have to recharge because of that Giga Impact, we get a free turn to set up a Power Up Punch. It does some seriously pathetic damage, but at least we get plus one, so the incoming Earthquake doesn't quite take it out, and we get hit by a Giga Impact, which we survive! If Sceptile would have been taken out, we at least had Balloom in the back with the Mach Punch to be able to seal the deal, but we actually made it through with two of our Pokemon left. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I beat a Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Hardcore Nuzlocke using only grass types. It definitely got pretty close there towards the end, but I gotta say, I had a great time using these guys, and this has probably been my favorite Nuzlocke I've done. I don't know why. I've had a fabulous time editing this video after a few days of holiday break, and I hope that the holidays have been fantastic for you guys as well. So if you made it all the way to the end of this video, consider subscribing, because if you you haven't yet, what are you doing? You could also leave a like down below and a comment telling me what run you would like to see me do next with which type. But until we see each other then, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, have a good one.